Good morning, guys. It's Saturday morning, um, it's December 19th. Um, I had recently made a video, well, last week, about um, the V and um, how it couldn't possibly be the mark of the beast. And um, I even left a link um, for a video that a, uh, another watchman had um, had made and um, broke it down in Revelation very eloquently and um, and it proves, I mean, beyond a shadow of a doubt, there's no way that this is the mark of the beast. And one of the, the facts, one of the reasons, the main reasons that it can't be is because we're still here. I mean, that's the bottom line is that the Christian church isn't going to be here when that happens. It's in fact, once I go through Revelation, I'm, I'm going I'm to do this study myself because I don't know how many people actually watch that video since how all the, you know, the, the um, comments that I got flooding in about this and people still believing it's the mark of the beast. Now, I believe it will become the mark of the beast. I believe it's going to be part of it at some point, some, in some kind of way, maybe. But um, it's, a, it's a terrible thing, and I certainly um, I hope nobody takes this thing because um, it, you know it, it, it's bad. It changes you. It, it does, it's not good. It has all kinds of bad stuff in it. It's poison. But um, I don't want anybody to to worry that their family is going to take the mark of the beast and go to hell because that's not going to happen. Um, you're not going to lose your salvation. It's not a salvation issue. Because the, the church is still here, um, Jesus had made a statement that um, that uh, the the Antichrist or the devil would fool the whole world if it were possible. I mean, I'm, I'm sorry, he would fool the whole world. He would even fool the elect if it were possible. The reason why it's not possible to fool the elect is because they're simply just not here to fool. They're not they're not going to be here when this mark of the beast comes on. And so I'm going to go through the study in Revelation. I'm going to go over it with you, and I'm going to show you how it's, it can't possibly be the mark of the beast. So, um, and then I have a, um, I have another, um, it's actually, uh, Uplift, I believe. Anyways, I have a video that I want to share a little piece of with you guys. It's got, it's got, uh, John from, um, Watchmen for the Great Day. It's, it's, it's got a lot, uh, Bob Barber. It's got a lot of people you're going to recognize that are doing a collaboration. And, um, they're talking about Christmas because I also had some, um, some comments when I did the Christmas song, and I mean, as if I don't already know about the, you know, the fact that Jesus wasn't born on the 25th of December. I mean, I, I don't see how a Christian living a life, to, being alive today, could not know that Jesus wasn't born on December 25th. But uh, we're going to go into that. Anyways, guys, um, if you haven't accepted the Lord Jesus Christ, if you died today and you don't know whether or not you'd go to heaven, or if the rapture came and you're not sure if you would be able to go, then you need to accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. Get saved and sealed today, now, now while there's still time. Because guys, we're running, uh, we're running out of time. I know uh, you hear me say that a lot, but um, you know, with God's way of looking at things, we are at the very door. I mean, He is, He's literally about to come any second. Nothing preventing Jesus Christ from coming for His church. And when he comes for his church, it's going to herald in the most horrific seven-year time period the earth has ever seen. And I know uh, seven years don't sound like that much until you understand what's going to be happening during that seven years. Um, it's going to be bad. All you got to do to accept Jesus Christ is believe um, to get saved, is believe that Jesus is the Son of God. He died on the cross for your sins, was raised on the third day. He ascended to heaven, made atonement for your sins, and you are you are free from sin by belief through Him, forever. And so um, you just need to believe it with your heart and confess it with your mouth. I mean that's the simple gospel, guys. I, there's some steps in the description that you can follow, but please believe me, it is a very simple, simple thing to get saved. It's all about belief. It's all about your heart. You know, I would suggest if you you haven't been saved, just go to God in, in repentance, which is um, the, the Greek word in the, in the Bible where it says repentance is metanoia, which means to have a, a change your way of thinking. Just is to change your mind simply about God. So from non-belief to belief, you believe that Jesus is the Son of God, and He died on the cross. Come to God and you know, as a and understand your sin condition that we are all sinners from the time we're born. We're born into a a, a, say, a state. A cursed state from the, since the Garden of Eden. We're all under the state of sin, and we're all destined to die, physically and spiritually. Um, when we die without Christ, 
<clears throat> you stand in front of judgment and God at the judgment day. And, and from there, you go to hell. I mean, there's, there's no two ways about it. Without Christ, you can't get into heaven. Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes into the Father except through me. There's no way to heaven except through Jesus. He is the door. So accept him now while there's still time and uh, be in the rapture. Be with us in heaven because if you don't, you like I said, uh, the, the alternative to being in heaven is, is hell. There's only two places where you're going to spend eternity. You're either going to spend it in heaven or you're going to spend it in hell. So accept him now while there's still time. I want to get into this study really quick here and um, show you what, uh, what I was talking about in Revelation. Guys, it's all here, and, and all you got to do is just read it. I mean, I mean, this is not that hard to understand. Even though the book of Revelation is a book of, you know, it's a vision. Jesus gave, a, it's like a big parable. You know, Jesus always spoke in parables. Jesus has given this revelation to John. So understand that it is, a lot of it is symbolic, but like any literary work, you have to take things in, in, in the right context, and you have to understand the timing of everything. So what we're going to do here is I want to show you, in Revelation 12 is where it talks about the child this birth. Okay, let's read it. And there appeared a great wonder in heaven, a woman clothed in the sun and the moon under her feet, and upon her head a crown of twelve stars. And she, being with child, cried, travailing in birth and pain to be delivered. And there appeared another wonder in heaven. And behold, a great red dragon having seven heads, ten horns, and seven crowns upon his head. And his tail drew the third part of the stars of heaven, and did cast them to the earth. And the dragon stood before the woman, which was ready to be delivered, for to devour her child as soon as it was born. And she brought forth a man-child, who was to rule all nations with a rod of iron, and her child was caught up to God and to his throne. There's that word, caught up, guys. Where do you see that? Where have you seen that before? That's in Thessal um, that's That's... What's it? Thessalonians or Corinthians? That's where Paul says in the twinkling of an eye, we are called up to meet with Christ in the air. We are called up is the um, is the word harpazo, okay, in Greek, and in uh, Latin is raptura, where the word rapture comes from. That's the rap. That is called up is rapture, okay. That's what that means. Now, if you recall, Jesus was not called up to heaven. This is not talking about Jesus. It doesn't fit Jesus. Besides, Jesus is the one telling the story. So why would Jesus be telling a story about himself? This is a future event. If you read Revelation, the very first verse, it tells you. This is a future event. This is not. This is what things is going to happen later, shortly to come. It's not things that were happening then. It's things that would happen later. Jesus had already died and been went to heaven and everything. I mean, it, that was all done. Jesus was alive in heaven telling this, so it wasn't Jesus. It was it was the Christian church. And the woman, the woman is, is Israel. The woman is, a, it was, Christian church was born out of Israel, okay? Out of, out of, out of the Jewish nation, out, of, out of, of Judaism, out of Israel, okay? The woman is Israel. And when I say Israel, I mean the Jewish people. Okay, and the woman fled into the wilderness where she had the place prepared by God that they should feed her 3,203 score days. And there was a war in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon, and the dragon, was, and, and the dragon fought against his angels and prevailed not, neither was their place found any more in heaven. And the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent called the devil and Satan, which deceiveth the whole world, was cast out into the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. Okay, and a, I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, Now is come salvation, strength, and the kingdom of our God, and the power of his Christ. For the accuser of our brethren is cast down, which accused them before our God day and night. Now, there's a reason why it mentions brethren here. But let's go back a little bit. Remember the child, the child that was caught up. Okay, it had a rod of iron. And see, that's another reason why people think it was Jesus, it was, it was you know, the birth of Jesus, because Jesus obviously had a rod of iron and one day during the millennium kingdom would rule the nations and that is a future event however it doesn't still doesn't fit jesus because <clears throat> he was called up to heaven as soon as he was born i see jesus was not called up to heaven as soon as he was born he was born he lived his life he, at 30 years old he was crucified he died he went to, he, he come back to life then he went to heaven then he came back and then he, it doesn't fit the story the the christian church was born out of judaism they, they go through the period of grace, and then they're called up to God, to his throne, in the rapture. They're called up. They're dead on sin. See, Jesus ascended. We are called up. It's two different events. Jesus 
basically lifted himself up to heaven, whereas we will be called up by, by, by God in, in a moment, a twinkling. As a matter of fact, Jesus moved kind of slow because the disciples stood around and watched him ascend and were marveled and marveled at it. And they said to him, it says, why did the angels that were standing around marveled? At, and, and, I mean, said to him because they were marveling, he says, why do you marvel at this? Because the same way that he ascends to heaven or the same way that you see him now, he will come back in like manner. So he's coming back the same way. He's going to slowly descend to the earth and everybody will see him. That's at the end of tribulation. He's coming. He's going to descend to the clouds or to the second heaven or whatever at the rapture. We're not going to see him till we meet with him in the clouds. We're going to be called up to him. So there's a big, big difference in these events, okay? Two different events. The, the rapture is not the, is not the second coming of Christ. The second coming of Christ was when Jesus descends and every eye sees him and he comes all the way to the earth to Mount Olives. And the rapture is when we are called up in a moment and to meet with Christ in the air. Who, where God does ascend, he descends to the clouds area, wherever that is, second heaven, and we are called up to meet with them, meet of the dead in Christ, and Jesus all at the same time. Okay? So these are different events. So the devil is waiting to devour the child. God, this is an analogy, okay, or it's a symbolic. See, the devil is waiting to devour the Christian church. He's been trying to devour the Christian church since its birth, since Jesus died on the cross. Every Christian, every person who become a Christian after Jesus, the devil has tried to destroy. He has tried to devour the church. Now, he has been successful with a few here and there because the Christians have been persecuted. But remember, he can only kill the body. He can't kill the soul. So technically, he didn't really kill them. He didn't really overcome them. You understand what I'm saying? To overcome them would be to, you know, destroy the entire, the, the, whole, the whole church. And he couldn't do that. He, he got a few here and there. Like Jesus said, some of you will be cast in prison. Some of you will die, but not all. But this is talking about the church in whole. The child represents the entire Christian church in whole. During the time of grace, it was born. So the whole, the, so understand something. When Jesus came and he gave us the covenant, that was a promise that he would return for us and take us where he is. So we are in the gestation period. Okay, we're in the, we're, we're in the gestation period of the church, which is the age of grace. At the time we're raptured is our birth. That's when the promise and the covenant is fulfilled and we become one with Jesus in heaven as his bride. That is the birth of the Christian church. That's the baby. And we will help him rule and reign as kings and priests during the millennium kingdom. That's what the Bible says. So we are the baby. So now that we got past that, let's move on. Whew. And I heard a loud voice in heaven saying, Now come salvation strength and the kingdom of our God and the power of his Christ for the accuser of the brethren is cast down which accused them before God day and night who is the brethren the Christian church who just got taken up to heaven we are the brethren guys um, that's what he's referring to is that the devil had been accusing the Christian church since its foundation since it was born since Jesus came and all the way to this point in time in the future where he was cast out of heaven, he had been accusing the Christian church, the brethren. Understand? The brethren had just got raptured. Do you see what I'm saying? We're in chapter 12, and the Christian church has already been raptured. It's the baby. Now, now think about this. And they, meaning the brethren, because look at it. I'm, I'm here. 10 says that calls about the brethren. The, the, he accused the brethren right here. Okay, and he's cast down. But in 11, and they, they, the brethren, overcame him, the devil, by the blood of the Lamb, and by the word of their testimony, and they loved not their lives unto death. This is not to talking about the tribulation where they had to die for their faith. This is saying that this group of people would have gladly died. And you know you would. If you were a Christian today, you know if you were given the option to die for Christ, that you would take that option rather than taking the mark of the beast. We love not our lives unto death. In other words, there is no, including the vaccine. We all are like kind of, you know, standing up and saying, we're not taking this. We aren't going to do anything to jeopardize our relationship with Jesus Christ and our salvation with him. We're not going to do it, guys. See, you see what I'm saying? We are the group, okay? We are the brethren, and we're not going to be here. We're going to be long gone, and, and we're going to, I'm going to show you, I'm going to prove it even further. Okay, so it says, Therefore rejoice ye heavens, and ye that dwell in them. 
But woe to the, it doesn't say but, but it says, Woe to the inhabitants of the earth and the sea, for the devil is cast down unto you, having great wrath, because he knoweth that he had but a short time. Now think about the timing of this. The devil went after the church all the way until the church was born. Right at the time before the church is born, right at that moment, the devil's fight gets, there's a war in heaven. There, the angel, uh, Michael's fight with the devil's angels. And the devil's fight with uh, Michael's angels. And the devil is cast out of heaven with his angels. Right at that time, the baby goes up because here's what happens, okay? You see where it says, Rejoice ye heavens and them that dwell in it, and woe to the inhabitants of the earth and to sea, because the devil has come down unto you. Why is the heavens rejoicing? Well, for one thing, because the devil is cast out, but who is the inhabitants of the heavens? Who is it that is rejoicing? The angels and us. And God, of course, is, you know, the, but mainly it's going to be us. Because he accused, I mean, it literally says, they accused the brethren night and day. So that's who's rejoicing. We're rejoicing because the devil is cast out of heaven and we don't have to worry about him anymore ever again. We are in heaven. He is on the earth. Everything, we're separate. We're separated forever. And he can't hurt us anymore. He can't accuse us anymore. And when the dragon saw that he was cast unto the earth, now listen, it doesn't say that he goes after the Christian church. Why? Because they're already gone. When he gets to, remember, he was waiting to devour the child as soon as it was born. So why, when he gets cast out of heaven, does he not go after the child? Because the child ain't here anymore. It's obvious. It says, and when the dragon saw he was cast unto the earth, he persecuted the woman which brought forth the man-child. Why would it bother to mention that? The man-child? Because the man-child was the Christian church who just left prior to his arrival on the earth, and he wanted to kill and devour the, the child to finish the job that he had started. But he wasn't able to do it. Because when he got to the earth, the child was gone. He was already raptured. And the and to the woman were given two wings of a great eagle that she, remember the, 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 the woman was um, the Jews. The, the, um, the Christian church was born from Jews, from Israel. That she might fly into the wilderness, into her place, where she is nourished for a time, and times and half a time from the face of the surface, three and a half years. Um, and the serpent cast out of his mouth water as of a great flood after the woman, that he might cause her to be carried away of the flood. And the earth helped the woman, and the earth opened her mouth and swallowed up the flood with the dragon cast out of his mouth. And the dragon was wroth with, wroth with the woman and went to make war with the remnant of her seed, which keep the commandments of God and have the testimony of Jesus Christ. Now, time has elapsed here from the time that he gets to the earth and goes after the woman. Now, see, God protected the woman. God brought the, if you remember the, the, uh, the verse in Daniel, the abomination of desolation, or even in Matthew, or, um, yeah, I think it's Matthew 24. Anyways, if you remember this verse, it says, and when you see the abomination of desolation spoken of by Daniel the prophet, let he who, he who is in Judea flee into the mountains. And uh, that verse there is, that is when the Jews see their Messiah, when he changes who they think is their Messiah, when he turns on them and declares himself God, and they realize this ain't the Messiah, this is the devil. He's telling them when that happens, when the abomination of desolation happens, when the devil des desecrates the temple, declares himself God and blasphemy and all that stuff, that they are to run to Judea. So as you can see, um, once the devil came down and the, he realized that the, the, the man-child of the Christian church was gone, he goes after the woman. And then when he can't get the woman, then eventually he will go after the, uh, the remnant. Okay, the remnant that keep the commandments of God and have the testimony of Jesus Christ. This is the remnant of the, the her seed. In other words, these are the these are the Christian saints right here. Okay, these are the, the the tribulation saints that from the time the tribulation starts, they have accepted Christ. They have um, um, you know realized what happened, accepted Christ, gotten serious with God, and they keep the commandments. So. Understand that this is a new dispensation. This isn't the dispensation of grace, where we are. We're not. I mean, everyone should keep the commandments of God. That's not the point. But you know, we are. We were under grace, and if we broke the commandments, we were still saved and sealed. This group of people will have to have. They're gonna have to 
obey the commandments of God and they're going to have to accept Jesus Christ and then they're going to have to die for their faith. It's almost like they, they, everything is thrown on them. Because they didn't accept Christ the first time and because they tried to live by the law, they were the legalists and everything else, now they have to do it all. Now they got to do with the law. Because remember, if you, the law, we're only free from the law because of faith. But if, if you try to live by the law, then you are condemned if you don't live it. So you, that's what faith is. So why it's so important to have faith and understand that we can't do it. We have to turn it over to Christ. And Christ's finished work on the cross is how that we are able to. That's how He fulfilled the commandments and how we are able to overcome them. The law through Him is because of His sacrifice. So, um, but this group of people here, these Christians are going to. Um, they're going to be under great tribulation, obviously, but under great persecution um, by the devil. Um, but here's the thing. This group of, this is time has gone by. Remember, like I said, time has gone by. And um, let's just go to chapter 13. We'll get, we'll get, um, it'll start to make more sense. Chapter 13 says, And I stood upon the sand of the sea, and I saw a, a, a beast rise up out of the sea, having seven heads, and ten horns, and upon his horns ten crowns, and upon his head the name of blasphemy. And the beast, the beast which, the beast which I saw was like unto a leopard, and his feet were as the feet of a bear, and his mouth was as the mouth of a lion. And the dragon gave him his power, and his seat, and his great authority. And I saw one of his heads as it were wounded to death, and his deadly wound was healed. And all the world wondered after the beast, and they worshipped the dragon. That which gave power unto the beast. And they worshiped the beast, saying, Who is like unto the beast? Who is able to make war with him? And there was given unto him a mouth, speaking great things um, and blasphemies. And power was given unto him to continue for forty-two months. And he opened his mouth and blasphemy against God, to blaspheme his name and his tabernacle and them that dwell in heaven. And it was given unto him to make war with the saints and to overcome them. And power was given to him over all kindreds, tongues, and nations. Now remember, when he came to the earth, you got to understand that this is this is all. Um, the, the chapter twelve is almost like a complete telling of the of, of what's going to happen to a certain point, right? To that certain point. And, and, and it's an analogy. Now, this is a little more, uh, this is also an analogy, but it's a different one. So think about what's being said here. So the world will marvel over this beast. Okay, this is all going to happen during the first part of the tribulation. That he will come on the scene with peace and flattery, and everybody will love him, and they will worship him. And, um, and then he will begin to exalt himself. And the next thing you know, he just starts speaking blasphemy against God. That's when he stands up in the, uh, the temple of the abomination of desolation, and he declares himself God. So it says, And all that dwell upon the earth shall worship him whose names are not written in the book of life of the Lamb slain the foundation of the world. Now listen to this. And it was given unto him to make war with the saints and to overcome them. If you remember in chapter 12, the saints overcame, not the saints, but the uh, the brethren overcame the devil by the word of their testimony in the blood of Jesus Christ. This is a different group of saints, a different group of Christians. Okay? this These Christians will be overcome by the devil. It says, and it was given unto him to make war with the saints and to overcome them during this time. This is another time. Chapter 12 ended the time, the dispensation of grace, and started the tribulation. Chapter 13 is the tribulation. You understand? Now the devil is on the earth and he's taking power. He's come in like a uh, like a lamb, speaking like a dragon. You see what I'm saying? With the mouth of a lion. So all, all this stuff is, um, I'm, um, I'm sorry, mouth of, speaking like a dragon. Yeah, the mouth of a lion. And then, but what I'm saying is he comes into his power. So once he comes to the earth, the Christians are gone. He goes after the woman. But that's while he's coming into his power. He's got to deceive them first. And then he goes after them at the abomination of desolation. But God helps the woman. God uh, has a place for them prepared in, in, in the desert, I guess in Judea. So, um... <clears throat> So it was given unto him to make war with the saints and overcome them, and power was given him over all kindreds and nations and tongues. And all, now listen to this, and all that dwell upon the earth shall worship him, whose names are not written in the book of life of the Lamb slain from the foundation of the world. So who's going to be worshiping the devil during that time? 
All those whose names are not written in the book of life. So no Christians is going to worship the devil, obviously, right? If any man have a hear, ear, let him hear. He that leadeth into captivity shall go into captivity. He that killeth with a sword must be killed with a sword. Here is the patience of the faith of the saints. And I beheld another beast come up out of the sea. Um, I beheld another beast coming up out of the earth. And he had two horns like a lamb and he spake like a dragon. Okay, now, first of all, remember what I just got through reading, all right? There's no Christians left. At, this, at the point that this happens, the Christians are gone, the saints are gone. Well, not all the saints are gone. They're, they're under great persecution. But, it, but understand that the, 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 the saints aren't worshiping the devil or trying to take the mark of the beast. Now listen to this. And I beheld another beast coming up out of the earth who had two horns like a lamb and spake like a dragon. And he exercised all the power of the first beast before him and caused the earth and them which in it to dwell in, and them which dwell therein to worship the first beast whose deadly wound was healed. And he doeth great wonders so that he maketh fire come down from heaven on the earth in the sight of men. And he deceiveth them that dwell on the earth by the means of those miracles which he had power to do in the sight of the beast, saying to them that dwell on the earth that they should make an image to the beast and which had the wound by the, the sword and did live. And he had power to give life unto the image of the beast that the image of the beast should both speak and cause as many as would not worship the image of the beast should be killed. So in this point in time, after the three and a half years, you're going to either worship the beast or you're going to be killed, okay? So if there's any Christians that, that's, that's left alive at that time, they will all be killed. He causeth both great, he, he, and he causeth all, both great and small, rich, poor, and free and bond, to receive a mark in their right hand and foreheads. So, foreheads. so after, the, after all the Christians and the saints are all gone, and the, the saints of the tribulation are killed, then the mark of the beast comes on the scene. Because... Everyone that's left on the earth will worship the beast in his image, and they will be caused to, to take a mark. See, and he calls us all, both great, small, rich, poor, free, bond, to receive a mark in their right hand or in their foreheads, that no man might buy or sell, save he that had the mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name. Here is wisdom. Let he at the understanding count the number of the beast, for the number of a man is number 603 score and 6. So the point of all this is to say this. The chapter 12 talks about the Christian church and the male child, which is the Christian church, who is raptured into heaven, and heaven rejoices. The devil is kicked out of heaven. The war is over. The devil comes to the earth. He begins to set up his kingdom on the earth by coming in with flattery and peace and things. Because, you know, there's, you know, this is where Daniel's prophecies come in. He comes in, you know, as a lamb. In other words, he comes in, just, everybody just, you know, he's charismatic and he's, you know, nobody, he's not threatening at all. He's just, um, he's coming, everybody loves him. Everybody loves him. They, 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 he's bringing peace, the, the idea of peace and all that. And, um, and, and he's going to build up his kingdom that way. In, a, in just a couple short years, a few short years, he's going to build up his kingdom that way and convince the whole world that he is, you know, he's awesome. They're going to worship him. They're going to love him. And then he's going to start showing signs and powers he, as he has his popularity begins to grow, he also starts to become very boastful and he starts blaspheming the Lord and starts making himself out to be God more and more until the day he stands in the Holy of Holies or into the, the holy place in the temple and declares himself God. Then then the Jews that are in Judea are supposed to run into, into the mountains into Judea. I mean the Jews that are in Israel will run to the mountains of Judea. So the um Basically, all the all the saints are gone. The saints that, that wouldn't worship, because he's already coming into power. The, the saints know who he is already. They've already pointed him out, and uh, they're being locked up and killed. And then the mark of the beast comes on; they're gone. The mark of the beast is going to be not. We're not going to take. Even if we're still here for a little short time after it starts, we're not going to take the mark of the beast. Not us, but you know that group of Christians. You know they're not going to take the mark of the beast. They know they can't. Um, and they'll be locked up and killed. Anybody that don't worship the image of the beast will be killed. So, I mean, it's not even about the mark of the beast. If they don't worship the beast, they'll be killed. 
It's the worshiping of him that causes the mark. He causes the mark because they worshiped him. You understand? It's not, it's not because they were tricked into taking the mark and then they were damned to hell because they took it. They already were damned to hell because they worshiped the image of the beast and then the, the, they were branded for it. That's what that mark represents. It's not, it, it, it could be a chip, okay? It could be something like that. But most likely it's a tattoo, a mark, a, a, it's a brand on your right hand or forehead. Now, now here's something to think about. In Hebrew, um, the Hebrew language is very rich. It's a simple language but it's very rich in meaning and understanding. So the, remember Jesus was a Jewish man. And when he spoke of this, he spoke of something that's often mentioned throughout the Old Testament as well. The forehead and the right hand. All throughout the Bible, the forehead and the right hand represents it represents a lot of things, but it represents headship. It represents thinking something through. It represents figuring something out. It represents who is in charge. It, it represents you making a decision, the value of decision. The forehead is where you think something through. You accept it. You, 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 you figure it all out. You think about it. You accept it. And the right hand represents power. It represents um, action. It's just like the Jewish letters. The rosh represents the head. The rosh. And the um, yod represents the arm and the hand, but sp most specifically the right hand of power, the right, the, the hand that you use, because most people are right-handed, the hand that, you, that puts something into action. So the mark of the beast is a brand on your forehead and right hand, just like God has put marks on the forehead and hands of his own people. It, it represents a heart situation. You have accepted the beast. You have worshipped the beast. You've already accepted him. You're, you, you are branded because of it. You received the mark because you worshipped the image of the beast. Because. You see what I mean? It's, 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 a, it's, a, it's a response to something you've already done. It's not something you can accidentally take and be... God's not going to let us get fooled, guys. I mean, come on. I mean, Jesus is not going If Jesus is not going to let the devil literally snatch us out of his hand, you think he's going to let the devil fool us out of his hand? It doesn't even make sense. He's not going to trick us. <laughs> so anyways... Stop worrying about the V. It's not the mark of the beast. And, okay, maybe eventually it'll lead into it. Guys, you're not going to be here, so stop worrying about it. If you're worried about your family, pray for them. Pray for them. But it's likely that when, if they don't listen to you and the rapture comes, they're going to remember what you told them. And they're not going to ever take the mark of the beast because they're going to understand. They're not going to worship the beast because they knew that their own family left with Jesus. And they're going to be worried about trying to get back to them. So the, the V is not something, this is, this is a scare tactic of the, of the system and of the devil, is to scare people that are riding the fence into submission is what it is, okay? We're not fence riders. We're Christians. We're saved and sealed, all right? There's nothing to fear. God didn't give us the spirit of fear. And I'm going to end that teaching with that because, guys, it's obvious. I mean, I just read you that the, the Christians are already raptured. The, the Christian church, you know, us right now, they're already gone. And the Christian saints that become Christians in the, in the tribulation days, they will already be killed for their faith before the mark of the beast even happens because the mark of the beast is the result of worshiping the image. That's a brand. It's, it's like a tattoo or a brand. That, that without it, you won't be able to buy or sell. If you don't worship the, de the devil in his image, you won't be able to buy or sell. You've got to be a part of his system. You've got to believe in it. and You've got to accept it and, and do it. You know, just like any system. You know, if you refuse it, then you wind up, you know, outside of the system. And then you'll probably likely be killed because of your faith. You see? So, like I said, even if there are saints left on the earth during that time, they're not going to take the mark of the beast because they're not going to worship the image. Right now, none of that is happening, okay? There is no beast system that is forcing us to worship it. All right? We're not going to worship anything but Jesus Christ and, the, and our Father in Heaven. We're not going to worship the image of the beast or the beast or the number. So we, this is not the mark of the beast, okay? All this is is a, is a vaccine with some really, really bad stuff in it. Really abominable bad stuff in it. That if you take it, it could change... Who you are. But don't don't forget that God is almighty and sovereign. And he can fix it. He can fix it. But here's the point. Your body is not going to be saved in the end. It's going to be changed. In the end, your spirit is clean. Your spirit will be clean because of Jesus. Nothing can undo that. No, that change that took place when you became a Christian cannot be changed. It cannot be undone. 
You can't change the state of your person and lose your salvation. That's not, that doesn't even make sense. You are who you are through Christ forever and ever and ever. No one can snatch you from his hand. Okay, But your body, now there has been people in the Bible who were killed that were already saved, the Christians, who had committed uh, atrocities in the church. And they were given over to the devil so that their body would be killed, but their spirit would live on. You see, that has happened. Because remember, God chastises his own. He, he punishes his own children. So taking this mark could cause you to wind up dead. But it's not going to affect your salvation. So I'm not saying, oh, go, go out and take it. You know, go. Don't take this thing. But don't worry about it having, taking away your salvation. It's not the mark of the beast. I don't know how many times I can iterate that. You're going to believe what you want to believe. Obviously, in the comments, there's like, it seemed like every other person said it's definitely the mark of the beast. Well, go read the Bible. That's all I can tell you is read Revelation. It's not the things that have to happen before the mark of the beast can come on, on the scene has not happened. And as long as you're not worshiping the devil or his image, you can't take the mark of the beast. So let's think about it, guys. Use common sense. Is the vaccine something that if you, that you know, you could you could still get it you could still take the vaccine and not worship the devil you see what I'm saying so the, that part of it is worshiping the devil it has to be a part of it it has to be now when I say it I believe it's a part of what will become the mark of the beast I believe that the devil will use something like this maybe this actual thing or maybe something else but does it matter what he uses it's not this is not the thing that has to be coupled by the worship of his image the worship of him Guys, it's all there in, in black and white. Just open your Bible and read it. And remember, Jesus is telling this this revelation, so um, you can count on it be true. <laughs> this this is this Jesus himself gave this vision and this revelation to John. So Jesus said, so you can say, thus saith the Lord, that those that worship the, the image and the beast are the ones who will take the mark of the beast. Okay, those are the ones that take it. So basically, the only way to get it is to worship the devil. And, and Christians are not going to worship the devil. At least I wouldn't think so. And if they did, of course, you know, that might change the story. But they're not going to. I mean, that don't even make sense. How would you even become a Christian and get saved and then want to go and do something like that? Maybe there's people out there that would. I don't know. I, I feel sorry for them if they did, but I just I, I don't think that's going to be it. That's not what we're worried about. What we're worried about is accidentally taking a vaccination or a you know a drug or whatever or a chip or a microchip or something like that and actually being taking the mark of the beast. None of that stuff is going to make a difference unless you have worshipped the devil in his image because that is what causes you. And it says it in black and white. That it says. And he had power to give life from the image of the beast, and the image of the beast should not speak, and cause that as many should not worship the image of the beast, should be killed. And he causes both all great, small, rich, and poor to receive a mark. And he exercised all the power of the first beast, and he causeth the earth, and them which dwell therein, to worship the first beast, whose deadly wound was healed. So, I mean, he's already caused them to worship the beast. And now they're receiving the mark to go with it. It's a hand in glove. I mean, it's, you know, you, you, it's both things. It wouldn't make any sense that, that they would be taking the mark of the beast just by taking a shot. It don't make any sense. Uh, certainly there could be that could be involved in it when it happens, when it finally get when you get branded, that could be how you get branded and tracked and everything else. But, guys, we're not going to be here. No worries. Anyways, let's get to the other teaching. Because this is a little more... Um, a little more, um, you know, downtrodden here. It's not so, uh, the mark of the beast is a really serious topic. It scares a lot of people. But now we can get to the Christmas thing. This video here was uploaded on the 18th. It was uh, uploaded by End Time Dream and Vision, by uh, Bob Barber. And um, he's got some uh, people I know you recognize. And I, I don't know all their names, but um, right where I'm about to play, I'm going to play this, share this one part. They're talking about Christmas, okay? So I want you to listen to this one part. And when it's over, you know, we'll talk about it again. But, um, guys, uh, it's, it's concerning Christmas, okay? When we Christians celebrate Christmas, and people all over the world celebrate Christmas because they love Jesus Christ, and, and, and he, they're, they're celebrating his birth because not really nobody knows when his birth is. But, unfortunately, it is the date that most of these pagan, you know, deities were born or claimed to be born 
But guys, that's why I believe the Christians adopted it this way so that they could basically make a mockery out of the others. Because we're not worshiping false images and beasts and we're not worshiping false gods and deities. We're worshiping Jesus Christ and his birth. We're just celebrating it on a day basically in spite of the um, pagan holiday. But anyways, just, just li listen to this and see what you think. Jesus says, I will be... It will be, you know, if I find faith, I'll be, uh, you know, it'll be amazing if he finds faith when he returns. Yeah, I find faith when I come. Right? So the faith is of God. Faith is, is also a gift as well as salvation, right? Ephesians 2 8. But if people are losing that faith in the end times, that restrainer can't restrain in the world much more, any longer. So the oil and the lamp is the faith, basically. Yes, and it gets smaller and smaller, and that small yeah. group of believers goes up. You know, what? yeah. You know what's amazing is that what you're saying right there. Uh, you know, we are in the Christmas season, and I know we can get into all that. But I'm not going to, but Santa, Satan, you know. Anyhow, um, it was funny. Have you ever seen those Christmas movies? My kids like watch them sometimes. You know. What happens with Santa when all the Christmas spirit and all the Christmas belief goes down to zero? He has no power. No more belief, no more power for Santa. You know, and I know that's a secular, and I know I know you can say anything you want to say about that, you know. Jesus wasn't born on December 25th, we know all that. But I'm just funny. it's just funny. What does, what does Santa, for Satan, what does he want? Belief. What does God want from us? Belief. He wants to be believed. What did Jesus want us? He wants us to believe him. He wants us to believe in the, the his death, burial, resurrection for our salvation. He wants belief. He wants faith. You know? And Satan, represented with Santa, what does he want? He wants to be believed, too. He wants belief. You know? You know what I'm saying? You see, you see those... Who does an amazing... Uh, Justin Peters. Do you guys know who Justin Peters is? Uh, he's in the circles, a lot of Calvary circles, uh, Todd Friel and stuff. He does an amazing, he wrote this amazing article on Santa years ago. And it is interesting how he put the letters, mix the letters around and says Satan. Uh, how he's just the, um, the counterfeit of, of Jesus. He's eternal. He gives, he's a gift giver. You know, he comes to bring gifts. He's for the whole world. You know, he's watching the entire world. Uh, you know, and you have to only believe on him. And I mean, there were so many things, just the occultic symbology of, of, I mean, it's mm -hmm. Can I can I uh, share something that I did in my video the other day? If if you didn't sure. see it, the someone had wrote me a brother's name was uh, August West and, and, and he wrote me a uh, a comment in the video and it was so interesting that I had to make a video because of what he said and basically it has to do with the prophecy of. Uh, Rabbi uh, Gaduri, you heard of Gaduri? Mm -hmm. Started he, reading that book years ago. The Rabbi who found Messiah is that? That's right. Yes, and he also prophesied that there would come a time in the time of Israel when Israel, you know, of course Jerusalem and and the Knesset, that there would be two Benjamins ruling. So these two Benjamins are now in ruling in their unity government because they have they've had. So far, three votes, all right? Three votes to have three times to either get Netanyahu or Gantz or whatever, but it's been Netanyahu and Gantz all along, and there are two Benjamins, both Benny Gantz and ben, Benny uh, Netanyahu, Benjamin Netanyahu. So in the prophecy of this, of uh, Rabbi Kadiri, done in 1980, or the 80s, he said that there would be because he was, he was asked by his students, when would Messiah come? Now, these are all Jewish people. They're not talking about Jesus Christ. They're talking about the Antichrist, but they think it's Messiah. But here's the way it works. He replied and said, after the third gate falls, then Messiah will come on the Sabbath after. So the way it works is the gates, they recognize gates as governments. And it ties into the two Benjamins that have been ruling for these three times, okay? The three times are still happening, but they're getting ready to dissolve the Knesset as of the 23rd of December. Okay? If they dissolve the Knesset, 
the the Sabbath after the the 23rd of December is on a Wednesday. The Sabbath afterward would be Friday or Saturday. I know I'm setting dates. I'm not setting any dates. I'm just giving you what a prophecy can. But that was the prophecy that when they would have three gates, and when those when the third gate fell, or the three, third time of government, so that they have to go to elections in March of 2021, that it would be then the Messiah would come after on the Sabbath after the dis dissolving of that Knesset of that third gate. It just so happens that happens to be Christmas. That's the oh, that would make a whole lot of sense too. Yeah. No. And with that, brother, brothers and sisters, with that, and all you that are watching, whoever's watching in the chat and everything else, the thought goes, and this came to me prior to hearing any of this and prior to making a video, but the other day I was doing something and it came to me that the world celebrates Christmas you know, and you just said, Bob, we all know, brothers, brothers, and sisters, brothers and sisters, we all know that Jesus was not born on Christmas, uh, de December 25th. That happens to be when all the deities, sun gods, and everyone else was born on, okay? But that's what, that's what the world celebrates as Christ's birth, okay? So as, pertinent, as, as important as that is, it's a time when the world recognizes Jesus came, right? Mm -hmm. That way, simply. So, my thought came the other day, as I'm doing something, I can't remember what I was doing, but I, the thought came that Jesus came 2,000 years ago, and he was the free gift. And now we're at a point where we're seeing all this happening, and we're in a time of uncertainty and craziness, and looks like tribulations right around the corner. And my thought goes, what if, Jesus that gave the gift every Christmas, right? Every Christmas we celebrate Jesus, the world does, okay? But what if this Christmas he redeems his gift, which is us? What if he takes us on Christmas Day? What kind of a message would that be to the to the world? You know what, brother? That reminds me of a, about two years ago, Christmas uh, morning at three. I used to put my, I didn't mean to interrupt, but you just interrupted. Oh, that's fine. Please. Sorry, I'll be quick. Uh, I listen to the Holy Bible app before I go to sleep just to have, you know, no demonic, just want the atmosphere to have the Word of God in there as I sleep. And it goes on a loop. So all night it's just going from book to book to book to book. So I just put it at random, whatever I am, before I go to bed. Well, God's timing is impeccable. At 3.16 in the morning, I'm awoken to John 3.16. He had it timed so perfectly that when he woke me, he was saying, for God so loved the world. And I looked at the clock and it was 3.16. It was so beautiful. Nice. Well, nice. That kind of thing just blows. Awesome. That's God. That's God. That's beautiful. You don't do that. You could have woke up at 2.15. Oh, not the same. <laughs> that's to be that minute within that span. You know? Mm -hmm. That's great. God is beyond our wildest imagination. He, he loves us beyond our understanding. <laughs> We're his. But understand what, what I'm saying really truly. We are his gift. He gave us him. We accept him. We are now, he's getting ready to open his gift, his birthday present, his gift. We are his gift. No, can, can, I, can I say something too about your thing there, Vanessa? Mm -hmm. The timing. Uh, same thing happened to me when I got up. I went to the bathroom in the middle of the night and I walked past my son's bedroom, my oldest son, and he's talking in his sleep. And as soon as I walked past his bedroom, he begins his mumbling, and he doesn't do it all night. It's just once in a great while. But it just so happened, once I woke up and I walked past him where I could hear him, he goes, no, no, and he goes, he will resurrect the dead. I just got chills. That's Amen. He said that right when I walked. I stopped. I was like, wow. Ooh, I just got chills. I was like, That's yeah. Crazy. And I asked him, what were you dreaming about? I was like, he doesn't remember. I was like, why did you say that in the middle of the night in your sleep? You know, that's a Holy Spirit, man. Right. That, I mean, I mean, how much proof do you need? I mean, that's more than enough. <laughs> right. And if he doesn't speak to you in your dreams, sometimes he will speak to someone else about you in their dream. It's oh, amazing, man. you know? And if, the fact that he said he will resurrect the dead. Yeah. Right. You know, Jesus said, I am, I am the life. I'm, I'm the resurrection. Right. I'm the life. Wow. You know, he's going to resurrect us for this. We descend from heaven with a shout. 
the voice of an archangel, the trumpet of God. All the things that Jesus does when he calls out your name with a shout. And I believe that's what the shout's going to be. It's going to be, John, come forth. Greg, come forth. Vanessa, come forth. Robert, come forth. Millions. Millions. Yeah, only Lord. And unless your son's like a serious little evangelist right now or your child. I mean, what child uses the terminology of <laughs> uh, resurrection and whatnot, you know? Yeah, that's not, that's not the type of words he would use. He knows about the rapture, and at that at that age, he was much younger. He would just say in his own words, Jesus comes and gets us. That's probably about the, the scope mm -hmm. of that back at that age when he was yeah. at it. It was a few years ago. But he would not say he will resurrect the dead. Mm -hmm. I'm like, those, those are not his words. I believe God is speaking to children. Greg shared something recently about his sons, uh, and then that my friend's atheist little girl having dreams that God's speaking to little children through dreams in their sleep. You know, it's not just us, it's these little kids. It's amazing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I think I think there's a lot of I think there's credibility to what you're talking about, John. Um possibly I got people who share dreams and visions about uh, a rapture at Christmas. Yeah. You know, I don't I can't recall them now, but going up run when it's snowing. Yeah. Of, of course, if people have seen other things like light. trees, trees okay. being bare, yeah. you know, with no leaves, but that could be down south, or yeah. that could be here. Well, you know. part of Greg's thing is with no leaves, so <laughs> it's true. <Yeah>. No leaves. <laughs> In, you, know, know. you know, it's funny too. I want to make a mention about you know we're talking about Jesus. He says, "I come to bring not not peace, but division." The vision is happening all the way from now. Yeah. It's, it's more and more fine and more and more defined all the way until Jesus does the, the final divisions at the end of the tribulation with the sheep and goats. It's division all the way through, man. No, nothing but division. But what's happening right now on the other side with Satan? Unity. You know, he's calling for unity right now. Everybody come together now. Come together, everybody. Yeah, that's the devil, man. Mm, there's <laughs> a Beatles song about that. What's that? There's a Beatles song about that. Talk about New Age Devil come together. Mm -hmm. oh, yeah. And in fact, anyways, guys, um, that's why I wanted you to see that because they're talking about um, the possibility of a Christmas rapture because of uh, Rabbi Kaduri. Now, if you guys don't know who Rabbi Kaduri is, um, he was a, a rabbi who he was like um, 108 years old when he died, but he was a well-respected rabbi in Israel and who had, he was a prophet, a real, a real bona fide prophet who had made predictions that God gave him, you know, God gave him prophecies and they come, they had come true. And one of his prophecies was about um, the, the, you know, the, the, the two Benjamins and the three gates and all that. But also he had wrote a letter and um, he told, he revealed it to people that he had the name of the Messiah, that the Messiah had visited him and talked with him. The Messiah, not the Antichrist Messiah, the Messiah, the real true Messiah, had visited him. And he was, he put his name in this letter, and um, but he said he couldn't be uh, read or revealed until after his death. But um, he did say this, he says that um, Sharon, uh, what was his name? Ariel Sharon, he says that the Messiah would come after the death of Ariel Sharon. At the time, of course, he was alive, and um, but now, you know, he is dead now. He was, uh, I think he was in a coma and eventually died. But um, Ariel Sharon is now dead, and he said the Messiah would come after he died. And here's what's crazy. After um, Kaduri died, and they opened the letter up, the name of the Messiah that he wrote down was Yeshua. Yep, Jesus. So all the, immediately all the Orthodox Jews who, who had always highly respected him all first, just automatically like, he must have meant something else. He couldn't have meant that. That's impossible. Surely he didn't mean that. He just, he got confused or, you know, they were saying all kinds of stuff. It, it, he just, he meant some other Yeshua or, you know, he just, he just, you know what I mean? They just, uh, they couldn't accept it. I mean, they're not going to accept it until Jesus shows himself, I guess, until he comes down and they see him. And then they'll believe him. But anyways, guys, that's all I got. If you haven't accepted Jesus, do it now while there's still time. And hopefully Jesus will come back on Christmas. And, um, and maybe that will be, uh, be everyone's Christmas present to go get to be with the Lord.
But uh, there's all kinds of stuff happening. Um, the, the video is really long now, so I'm going to stop. But uh, there's all kinds of things happening, guys. And uh, I mean, we I wanted to talk about the alien thing. You know, I have a lot to talk about there, but I'll have to make a separate video on that. But um, you, all, you guys have a great day. Like I said, if you haven't accepted the Lord Jesus Christ, do it now while there's still time.